In this video, we're going to talk about electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, but specifically nitration, reduction, diazotization, and the SAMI reaction. So let's start with benzene. We're going to go over the mechanism of these reactions, but let's just write an overview of each step. Now the first step is nitration. Once we add nitric acid and sulfuric acid, it's going to replace a hydrogen with an electrophile known as the nitro group. So we're going to get nitrobenzene. So this step is known as nitration. Following nitration, we're going to reduce the nitro group into an amino group using a metal and acid. The metal is basically a source of electrons. Iron is a reducing agent. So nitrobenzene will be converted into aniline, which is a benzene ring with an NH2 group. So this reaction is a reduction reaction. It reduces the nitro group to an NH2 group. Anytime you add hydrogen or if you remove oxygen, it's a reduction reaction. Now at this point, once we have aniline, we're going to add sodium nitrite with hydrochloric acid at a very low temperature, maybe 5 degrees Celsius. And what's going to happen is the NH2 group is going to be converted to an N2 group. This is known as an arene diazonium salt. Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it has a positive formal charge, and so it's complex with a chloride ion. So this process of converting the NH2 group into an arene diazonium salt is known as uh, diazotization. Now once we have the arene diazonium salt, there's a lot of reactions that we can add at this point, but we're just going to go over a few of them. Specifically, the Sandmeyer reaction. The Sandmeyer reaction is a reaction where it replaces the N2 group with the anion of a copper salt. So if we add copper chloride, it's going to replace the N2 group with a Cl group. We can also add copper bromide to get bromobenzene. We can also use copper cyanide, which will give us this product, a Cn group. So we're going to write up a mechanism from benzene all the way to this particular product. So let's begin. By the way, for each of these reactions, feel free to propose a mechanism. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with a mechanism to convert benzene into nitrobenzene. So let's start with the first step. Now the reagents that we can use are nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So go ahead, pause the video, and propose a mechanism for this conversion. So let's draw nitric acid. Nitric acid has three oxygen atoms attached to it, one of which has a hydrogen. One oxygen has a single bond and a negative formal charge. The nitrogen has a positive formal charge. So, nitric acid is going to react with sulfuric acid. The OH group is going to grab a hydrogen from sulfuric acid, turning into uh, H2O. Soon it's going to leave as H2O. So this oxygen now has a positive formal charge. Now what's going to happen is this oxygen on the left is going to use one of its lone pairs to form a double bond, expelling water. And so this is going to produce the electrophilic species in this reaction. This is known as the nitronium ion.
benzene is going to react with the nitronium ion. In this reaction, benzene is going to behave as a nucleophile. The nitronium ion is the electrophile. So the arrow always flows from the nucleophile to the electrophile. It flows from a region of high electron density to a region of low electron density. So once we add the nitrogen to this group, oh, by the way, this pi bond is going to break. Let's break the other one. Once we add the nitro group, where is the plus charge at this point? Now this nitrogen still has a positive formal charge. But notice that this carbon, it lost a bond and it didn't regenerate one. So there's a plus charge on that carbon. It still has a hydrogen attached to it. So now at this point, we need to use a base to remove the hydrogen. So let's keep it simple and let's use water. Since water was expelled from the nitric acid molecule. So what is going to grab the hydrogen, break the carbon-hydrogen bond using those electrons to regenerate the aromatic ring. So now we have nitrobenzene. So at this point, I'm going to represent the benzene ring with an R group. Now, how can we propose a mechanism going from uh, nitrobenzene using iron metal and HCl to produce aniline? Now, it's important to understand that iron metal is a reducing agent. It can release electrons to the solution. Now, these two electrons doesn't have to leave at the same time. In actuality, one comes after the other. The first one might leave, and the second one might leave maybe 0.1 milliseconds right after. So in this reaction, sometimes we're going to use the flow of two electrons, and other times we're going to use the flow of one electron. So let's begin. So first, let's draw nitrobenzene in this manner. So whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it's going to have a positive formal charge. Now the first thing we need to do is react it with hydrochloric acid. So the oxygen is going to grab a hydrogen and expel the chlorine group. Giving us an OH. So now at this point, we're going to reduce the nitrogen atom by giving it two electrons from Fe. So iron metal is going to donate two electrons to the nitrogen atom. And as that happens, the pi bond is going to break. So what we have now is the nitrogen, which acquired two electrons. So those two electrons are present in the form of that lone pair. And this oxygen now has three lone pairs. Now, that oxygen with a negative charge is going to quickly grab a hydrogen, especially under acidic conditions. It won't last long in that state. It's very difficult to have a negative charge to remain under acidic conditions. So as soon as it forms, it's going to grab a hydrogen from HCl. Converting into an OH. Now, our goal is to convert the NO2 group into an NH2 group. So we need to remove oxygen and add hydrogen. That is our goal in this process. In order to remove a hydroxyl group, we need to protonate it and kick it out as water. So we need to add HCl again. So one of the hydroxyl groups is going to grab a hydrogen, expel the chlorine ion. So we still have one hydroxyl group left over, 
we have an OH2 group, which is now a good leaving group. Hydroxyl is a bad leaving group, because if this leaves, it's going to leave as hydroxide, which is not going to happen under acidic conditions. So this OH group will form a double bond, expel an H2O. So now at this point, we have an R group, a nitrogen, which has a lump here. Now I'm going to take this group and put it in this position. I'm going to move it to the right. So now we have a double bonded oxygen atom with a hydrogen, which means that it has one lump here and a positive charge. So now we can draw a resonance form. This intermediate is stabilized by resonance. Not only does the oxygen bear the positive formal charge, but so does the nitrogen. Oxygen can break the pi bond and pull two electrons toward itself. And if it does so, we're going to have this resonance form. So notice that the nitrogen atom is electron efficient. If we calculate the formal charge, which a quick way to do that, take the number of valence electrons and subtract it by the number of bonds and dots. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. In this structure, it has two bonds and two dots. So five minus four is one. So at this point, it has a positive one formal charge, which means that we can reduce it with uh, iron metal. But this time, we're not going to add two electrons at one time. We're only going to add one electron. To show that, we need to use a half arrow. A half arrow represents the flow of one electron. A full arrow represents the flow of two electrons. So now the nitrogen no longer has a positive formal charge. If you count the if you calculate the formal charge, it's going to be five valence electrons minus the two bonds minus the three dots. So it's neutral. But we do have a radical. So what's going to happen next? Now remember, our goal is to add hydrogen and remove oxygen. So let's add hydrogen to the nitrogen atom. So nitrogen is going to use one of its lone pairs to acquire a hydrogen atom. So now we have an NH group attached to an OH group. And it still only has a radical left over. So if we calculate the formal charge, it's five valence electrons minus three bonds minus one dot. So nitrogen has a plus one formal charge, which means we can add another electron to it from Fe. And so now it's going to be neutral again. Now that it's neutral, let's add HCl to get rid of the OH group. So the hydroxyl group is going to grab a hydrogen and it's going to turn into a good leaving group. So how can we get rid of this water molecule? What can we do? So at this point, we need to add another electron. So we're going to use Fe to add just one electron at this point. And as that occurs, water is going to leave. So if we add just one electron, the nitrogen atom will be neutral at this point. If we add two electrons, the nitrogen is going to have a negative formal charge. And this nitrogen is unstable, especially in acidic conditions. So that's why we're adding one at a time. It's better for it to be neutral than to be too basic. So once we add the electron and kick out water, we can now react it with HCl. So it's going to take a lone pair. And we're going to have this. 
So it still has one electron, but now it has two hydrogens. Now the last thing we need to do is use iron metal to deliver one electron. So now we have the RNH2 group, which has a lone pair. So this is a proposed mechanism for the conversion of a nitro group to an NH2 group, going from nitrobenzene to aniline. Now that we have aniline, let's see how the NH2 group converts into the arine diazonium salt when we add sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid. So first, let's react these two together. When you put sodium nitrite in hydrochloric acid, you're going to get nitrous acid HNO2, which can also be written as HONO. You might have seen it this way in your textbook. Sodium chloride, we're not going to worry about that. Those ions are spectator ions. They won't participate in the reaction. So how can we draw the NO2 minus ion? So this particular polyatomic ion has two oxygens, one of which is part of a double bond. And this oxygen has a negative charge. Anytime oxygen has one bond, it has a negative formal charge. So let's react it with HCl. So this is going to acquire a hydrogen, and we're going to get an OH group. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to react it with HCl again. And so now, the hydroxyl group has been converted to a good leaving group. And it has a positive formal charge. So next, water is going to leave. So once it leaves, we have a nitrogen that has a double bond O. It still has a lone pair, and now it has a positive formal charge. Nitrogen, if you calculate the formal charge, it's five valence electrons minus two bonds, two dots, so it's plus one. Now I'm going to rewrite it like this. This is called the nitrosonium ion, which has a resonance form. The oxygen can take one of its lone pairs and form a triple bond. So the positive formal charge is shared between the oxygen and the nitrogen atom. However, in the reaction, we're going to use this form. So now, let's take aniline. Aniline is going to react with the nitrosonium ion. So it's going to simply attach itself to the NO group. It has two hydrogens, which we're going to write it this way. Now this nitrogen, which has four bonds, has a positive formal charge. Now we're going to use water to act as a weak base to remove the hydrogen. So we have this now. So now this nitrogen is neutral again. So what do you think is going to happen next? What should we do at this point? So now that water 
acquire the hydrogen, it's going to be in the form of H2O+, which for now I'm going to draw it like this. So this oxygen is going to grab a hydrogen from the hydronium ion. So now the oxygen has a positive formal charge. So oxygen is going to pull the electrons toward itself. So this nitrogen is going to use this lone pair to form a double bond, causing this pi bond to break. So now we have a hydroxyl group at this point. Now one thing I'm forgetting is the hydrogen that was here. So let's put that back. So now this nitrogen has a positive formal charge, and so water is going to be attracted to it. So water is going to take away the hydrogen. So what's going to happen at this point? Now notice that we're getting closer to the N2 group. We need to get a triple bond here. And also at the same time, we need to remove the hydroxyl group. The best way to get rid of an OH group is to add hydrogen to it and kick it out as water. So let's use H2O plus to do that. So now the hydroxyl group is gonna grab a hydrogen, expel in water. But the water won't be expelled yet. That's going to happen uh, soon. Right now we have OH2. So now in the next step, the nitrogen atom is going to take one of its lone pairs, form a triple bond, and expel H2O. So now we have our arene diazonium salt, which is this compound. So that's the mechanism for that process. Now let's go over the Sambi reaction, where we react the arene diazonium salt with a copper cyanide. Now it's tempting to write a mechanism like this. This reaction occurs under very cold temperatures. If you heat it, a nitrogen gas can leave, producing a vinyl or uh, a cation on this particular benzene ring, which is unstable. So we have an arrow cation. Now heat can make this work though, because with heat, nitrogen gas will have the energy to leave the solution. And nitrogen gas is stable, so the formation of a very, very stable gas could explain why we can potentially get an unstable cation. But this may not be the best mechanism uh, to show it, but it does explain how to easily get the product. So at this point, cyanide can come in and simply combine with the cation, giving us this product. Now, other mechanisms have been proposed. Typically, it's believed that the copper cyanide, the Cooper salts, work well with this reaction due to uh, radical intermediates. Now, let's spend some time talking about copper. There's three common forms that copper is usually found in nature. That's copper metal with an oxidation state of zero copper plus with an oxidation state of plus one and copper plus two. Now even though copper has 4s electrons and many 3d electrons, 
because the copper plus two state is one of the most common oxidation states, two out of those many electrons are commonly used in chemical reactions. So I'm going to draw those two commonly used electrons like this to indicate that we have the copper in the zero oxidation state, which means that copper plus one only has one of those commonly used electrons, and copper plus two does not have any. So I'm doing this so we can keep track of the oxidation state of copper throughout the reaction. So let's draw the arene diazonium cell. So in copper cyanide, cyanide has a negative one uh, charge, which means that copper is in the plus one oxidation state. So the copper ion is going to interact with this particular uh, ion. And it has uh, one of those commonly used electrons. Now there's two electrons in the bond. And we know that in this reaction, N2 is going to leave. And when nitrogen gas leaves, it looks like this. So when it leaves, it needs to take two electrons with it. In this bond, one of those electrons will travel towards the nitrogen atom, and the other electron will go towards the benzene ring, giving us a radical intermediate. And this copper is going to give away an electron to nitrogen. Since nitrogen has a positive formal charge, it wants electrons. So after this step, we're going to have nitrogen gas, which will leave the solution. We're going to have a benzene ring with a radical on it. And copper gave away an electron. Since it lost an electron, it's now in the plus two oxidation state. So we're not going to have any blue dots on it because it doesn't have any commonly used electrons attached to it at this point. So now the cyanide group is going to come in. The carbon part of the cyanide has the negative formal charge. So cyanide is going to attack the carbon, expelling this radical. That electron is going to go back towards the copper plus two ion. And so we have our CN group, and we regenerated the copper plus one ion. So that is the proposed mechanism using the radical intermediates for the semi reaction. But if you want to understand the, that last step, you can see it this way. So we have a benzene ring with a radical, and it reacts with the CN group. The benzene ring and the CN group connects, and it does so by expelling an electron. Then this electron is captured by the copper plus two ion, generating or regenerating the copper plus one ion, which is really behaving as a catalyst in this process. Now there's one more reaction that we're going to cover, and that is diazonium or diazocuplin. So let's start with phenol. We're going to react phenol with an arene diazonium salt. But I'm going to draw it like this. So we can connect these two molecules together. This particular nitrogen has a positive charge, and we still have the chloride somewhere in the solution. So what's going to happen is that oxygen is going to use this lone pair to form a double bond, causing this pi bond to move here, causing this one to attack the nitrogen. And then the triple bond is going to break. Those electrons are going to move towards the nitrogen atom. And so now there's a double bond between the oxygen 
and the carbon atom of the benzene ring. But now the two rings are connected by an azo linkage. Now keep in mind, there is a hydrogen atom here, which we need to get rid of. So right now we have a double bond here and here, and the oxygen has a positive formal charge. Now in the next step, chloride is going to act as a weak base. It's going to grab the hydrogen, and the carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break. It's going to regenerate the double bond that was here, causing this double bond to move back to where it was, breaking this pi bond. So now, we have our product. So we have an OH attached to a benzene ring, connected by means of two nitrogen atoms attached to another benzene ring. So these types of molecules form azo dyes. And so this is it, diazocuplin. That's how you can connect two benzene rings together. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.